European stock indices plunge over fears of a new banking crisis, stoked by US bank closures and Credit Suisse turmoil. French lawmakers will vote this Thursday on controversial pension reforms, which have sparked waves of protests and strikes across the country. Russian President Vladimir Putin hosts Syria's Bashar al-Assad in Moscow to reaffirm their two countries' strategic ties. Fears of a new banking crisis have seen the main European stock indices plunge on Wednesday, closing with losses of more than 3%. The CAC 40 in Paris was down 3.5%, the DAX in Frankfurt 3.2% and the FTSE in London 3.8%. The IBEX 35 in Madrid was even harder hit, falling by 4.3%. European banks have been suffering the aftershocks of the earthquake that rocked Credit Suisse, Switzerland's second largest bank, after its Saudi shareholders said it will no longer provide financial assistance. In today's session, Credit Suisse closed down 24%, having fallen as much as 30%. Either way, this is the worst close in its history. The sector was already reeling after two regional U.S. banks collapsed and a drop in oil prices that saw U.S. stocks take a hit. Against this backdrop, the euro fell by around 2% against the dollar. The impact of the Silicon Valley bank collapse on the EU's banking sector is limited. That's according to the bloc's financial services chief. Speaking before the European Parliament in Strasbourg on Wednesday, Mairead McGuinness used Silicon Valley Bank as an example of why lightly regulated foreign lenders need to meet stricter rules inside the EU. Thank you, President. Uh, good afternoon. These US banks were not subject to strict regulatory requirements for liquidity because the United States does not apply Basel to mid-sized and smaller banks. While here in the European Union, we do apply the Basel Prudential Standards to all banks. Had this been the case in the US and the Basel requirements on liquidity applied, it is likely these US banks would have had a stronger liquidity position. The Basel regulations are designed to decrease the damage done to the economy by banks that take on too much risk. The European Commission says it's monitoring developments closely. One Dutch MEP, though, says the European banking sector is well equipped to weather a Silicon Valley bank-like storm. I am confident, however, that we have learned from the previous crisis. Uh, we've had a huge banking crisis in the European Union. We have built a, a new framework when it comes to banking legislation to avoid these crises in the future. And now we will see in practice whether what we have done in the past years is sufficient to prevent such a crisis from spreading to Europe. And I'm confident that this will happen. Fallout from the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank isn't completely contained, though. Investment bank Credit Suisse has been hard hit, a much bigger concern for the global economy than the regional US bank. Shares of the Swiss banking giant plunged 30% to an all-time low after its major shareholder, Saudi National Bank, said it wouldn't buy more shares in the Swiss bank on regulatory grounds. The die is cast. Despite widespread strikes and protests, the French Senate and National Assembly will vote this Thursday on the controversial pension reforms proposed by President Macron's government, after a commission made up of members from both bodies agreed on a legislative text. The regulations push back the minimum retirement age from 62 to 64, a move that the government argues will shore up the future of pensions and increase the number of older people in work. But these arguments do not convince everyone. In recent weeks, three million people took part in waves of protests across the country. This Wednesday, however, the numbers were down, with only hundreds of thousands turning out. Thanks to the support of the right, the reform will likely pass in the Senate and National Assembly. But Macron's flagship project has been rejected by unions, the left, the extreme right and a majority of French voters. The historic centre of Naples was the scene of a pitched battle on Wednesday between Eintracht Frankfurt fans and the Italian police. 
Hundreds of supporters of the German football team were angry when they were barred from buying tickets for the Champions League final 16 match between their club and SSC Napoli. German fans threw fireworks, stones and bottles at police who responded by firing tear gas. Most of the fans were eventually evacuated from the city in buses, but Italy's interior minister is under fire for failing to prevent the brawl. The Russian and Syrian presidents have reaffirmed their country's strategic relations at a meeting in Moscow. The talks focused on rebuilding Syria after 12 years of civil war and on mending relations between Damascus and Russia's ally, Turkey. Vladimir Putin also offered further aid following Syria's recent earthquake. Syria is one of the few powers to back Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and Bashar al-Assad confirmed his continuing support. His words were underscored with the floral tribute to Russia's war dead. Moscow's military support for Assad's forces helped turn the tide of Syria's war against the rebels. In return, Syria is now strongly backing Russia in the face of widespread international condemnation of the Ukraine invasion. Frayed relations between Washington and Moscow have become even more tense after a Russian fighter jet struck an American surveillance drone over the Black Sea on Tuesday, forcing the U.S. to bring it down in international waters. The White House is calling it reckless and unsafe, while Moscow has described it as a provocation. What we saw, again, were, were fighter aircraft dumping fuel in front of this uh, UAV uh, and then getting so close to the aircraft that it actually damaged the propeller on the MQ-9. Because of the damage, uh, we were uh, in a position to have to essentially um, crash it into the Black Sea. Russia's ambassador to the U.S. was later summoned to the State Department, but not before justifying the actions of the Russian pilots. This uh, drone can carry 1,007 hundred kilos of explosives. This drone can carry a few bombs. You see that what will be reaction of United States if you see such Russian drone very close, for example, to San Francisco or New York? What will, will be reaction of United States? For me, it's clear. Russian and U.S. aircraft have operated over the Black Sea since the start of the war, but this is the first known interaction. The Pentagon has warned such actions could lead to miscalculation and unintended escalation. Ukraine's top military command is unanimously in favor of defending the sector of eastern Ukraine, including the city of Bakhmut, and inflicting maximum losses on the enemy, President Volodymyr Zelensky said. Now, where exactly the heaviest fighting is going on? The Institute for the Study of War says Russian forces advanced within Bakhmut and continued ground attacks in and around the city. Now, in the south, the U.S.-based think tank states geolocated footage indicates that Russian forces have advanced along Sadova Street in southern Bakhmut. In the north, Russian mill bloggers widely claim that Wagner Group fighters captured some of the workshops of the Azov Metallurgical Plant, a sprawling complex in a northern neighborhood of Bakhmut. Russian sources additionally claim that Wagner is advancing northwest of Bakhmut in the direction of Udikhovo-Vasilivka. This is about 12 kilometers from Bakhmut. Zelizyansky and 
Minkivka. The Ukrainian general staff reported that Russian forces are conducting positional battles in and around Bakhmut and that Ukrainian troops repelled Russian attacks on Bakhmut itself and around the city. And while Wagner units and Russian forces in general appear to be making limited advances around Bakhmut, they remain well short of completing a turning movement or the city encirclement and may be vulnerable to Ukrainian counterattack there. Sri Lanka is in the midst of a full-scale strike. No electricity, no public transport. Schools are closed and even doctors are on strike. Nagy meglepetésre ébredtek a Sri Lankaiak szerda reggel. Bárhogy kapcsolgatták a villanyt, nem lett világos. Az ország legnagyobb szakszervezete ugyanis beváltotta előző napi fenyegetését, és az egész országra kiterjedő, egynapos általános sztrájkot hirdetett. Ehhez pedig később csatlakoztak az orvosok, a rendőrök, a határőrök, a tanárok, a vasúti és buszos dolgozók. Trade unions are calling on the government to reverse economic reforms imposed by the International Monetary Fund. They also want a new progressive tax regime, lower interest rates and lower electricity bills. Local residents say the cost of living has spiraled. <laughs> Last two years very cheap, now it's very more expensive. Two years ago, like uh, maybe one month, like uh, 20 percent. Now it's a 60 percent. Too high the prices, not good salary. Sri Lanka is effectively bankrupt and desperately needs a bailout package from the IMF. The country's total foreign debt is more than 51 billion dollars, more than half of which has to be repaid by 2027. Thank <laughs> you.